WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5 update. Hello, WeatherTrack listeners, and thanks for joining me today as I discuss the WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5 update. If your phone settings allow WeatherTrack Mobile to update automatically, you should already have all of these new features in place. If you log into your WeatherTrack mobile device looking for these new features and don't see them, try going to the App Store for Apple users or the Google Play Store for Android users to download the most current version of WeatherTrack mobile. I'm excited to show you that with the WeatherTrack mobile 3.5 update, we've upgraded the access to the controller level programming, including consolidating some of those controller access features like Master Valve Override and the controller lock and adding access to a lot of valuable programming features from the app, including all of the options in the setup menu, the ability to set up flow sensors with your points of connection and main lines, and access to all of your water restriction information, including the ability to change and control the days and times that your programs will water. We've also expanded the station programming capabilities of WeatherTrack Mobile, adding advanced station programming and giving you access to all of the station programming settings, as well as the visibility and the ability to manage and update a station's current depletion. So we'll start the demonstration at the login screen where you enter your own unique username and password. And when you log in for the first time, WeatherTrack Mobile will give you a quick tour of all of the features available to you. So we can visit the details of the site page, the controllers page, the stations page, and then when we pass the stations page, we see this page called What's New in 3.5. This is designed to highlight those new advanced features, which we'll be detailing in this training. Then you have a quick tutorial on the site map and an access to our most current video training. Then I allow WeatherTrack Mobile to have access to my device's location so I can make the best use of the mapping tools and other GPS dependent features. And when I complete the login, I'll land on my sites page where I can see all of the sites that I've been given access to. To get to the first feature we want to look at for the 3.5 update, we'll advance from the sites page and go to the controllers page by pushing the small button with the forward arrows on it right next to the site that we want to manage. Here on the controllers page is where you'll find those new controller level commands. So we will select the controller that we want to manage by pushing the big button on the left that displays both the controller status and the controller name and serial number. And we'll start by looking at the navigation toolbar that starts with the alerts, goes to percent adjust, then rain pause, and here on the fourth button called Access is the first feature we want to discuss with a 3.5 update. You'll notice with this release that we've combined two features onto one button, the Master Valve Override and the OptiFlow Controller Lock. Other than the small movement in location, these features behave the same way they always have. So if you'd like to manually add a Master Valve Override, you can just select the amount of time that you want to run that Master Valve Override for, and that will open up your normally closed Master Valve and suspend all leak alerts. And if I go to an OptiFlow controller, you can see if I want to unlock that controller for field management, I can just select the unlock time and add time, which will unlock the field troubleshooting tools available at the panel of the OptiFlow controller. So identical functionality on both of those tools, only now they're combined into one button called Access, which gave us room on the navigation toolbar for this Program button. And this gives us access to a lot of the controller programming that was previously unavailable at WeatherTrack Mobile and only available at WeatherTrack.net or at the WeatherTrack controller. So for reference in this video, I'm going to pull up the display from the WeatherTrack.net program page to show you exactly how the new features from WeatherTrack Mobile sync up to those at WeatherTrack.net. So first we see the items in the setup menu. These are the things that once you set, you'll probably never need to change. Things like your time zone, whether we want to automatically adjust for daylight savings, how many active stations, or how many valves does this controller manage, whether you want your programs to run in stack or overlap, whether you want to be using the Mad Limit switch, you always want to have your runtime valve test left on, and then your backup weekly ET, which is the ET that your controller will use if communication is lost for more than a week. After we've correctly filled out all of the items on the setup menu, we can scroll down, and this is where we have the ability to program in all of the details of our flow components. 
The first thing we want to do on the flow menu is manage our points of connection. So first let's select POC1. So I click forward and here you see all of the details of our first point of connection. To get this properly programmed, the first thing we want to do is address the assigned to mainline question. So I go to assign to mainline and push forward. And there we see that POC1 has been assigned to mainline 1, and that all of the programs on this controller, A through H, have been assigned to that mainline. If you're reconfiguring which points of connection go to which mainlines, you might need to remove all of the programs from that mainline. To make that easy, we've created this great tool, which allows you to click this button and remove all of the programs from a mainline, and then you'll be able to freely associate which point of connection goes to which mainline. Then in an upcoming segment, I'll show you how to reassociate those programs back onto the main lines they need to be assigned to. So once you've assigned your point of connection to the proper main line, the next thing we want to do is address the master valve and program in what type of master valve we have, whether it's normally open or normally closed. Then we decide whether we want this master valve to be included or excluded when we call for the master valve override feature. And then we're going to set up our flow sensors. So we turn this flow sensor on or off, and then we choose the correct flow sensor. And all of the WeatherTrack compatible flow sensors are in here, but if you want to try something outside of the book, you can always try the custom setup. And when you select the part number of the flow sensor you're using, WeatherTrack will automatically fill in the proper K and offset value for that device. And the last programming option we have for a point of connection is to assign a pump start to this point of connection. So if one of your stations manages your pump start relay, this is where you would assign that station. Then anytime a program is calling for the pump, the weather track will apply current to that station and kick the pump on. So just like at weathertrack.net, the first step in setting up your flow features is setting up all of the components of each point of connection. Just as a reminder, when program settings changes are made, the apply button will appear on the bottom and the changes won't be saved until you hit apply. One nice new feature with WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5 is the save reminder. So if you're about to navigate away from a page that you've made changes to without saving, WeatherTrack Mobile has a built-in reminder. So when you're setting up flow, we set up our points of connection first and fill out all of the information for all of our points of connection. So if you have a second point of connection, you have to go through that same process again. And once your points of connection are all set up, then just like on weathertrack.net, we move on to programming our main lines. And programming main lines is really about programming the alert thresholds or the alert limits that the software should look for. So when we go into program main line one, we do have a quick link to our point of connection information because that's such a vital part of the conversation. So if you need to fast track back to those point of connection settings, you can just press this button and it's a quick link. But here on the mainline programming page, we set up the mainline break alerts and all of the details about mainline break, your mode, whether you want it off, alarm only, or alarm in action, the threshold, which represents the measured value that would spark the alert, and the delay that's built in to allow the system to balance out when it's in transition to eliminate false alerts. First, you program in all of the thresholds for your mainline break alerts, and then all of your no-flow thresholds, and then all of your leak alert thresholds, even your extended leak information can be programmed here on the mainlines page. And when you're done, we go back and fill out the second mainline if there is one. Once the mainline programming is complete, we scroll down. We have a few last general flow settings that we can program here from WeatherTrack Mobile. First of all, the flow alert clearing. If you want the flow alerts to clear and retest at the program A start time, set that to auto. Or you can program it to require manual clearing. Then we have the delay before learning and the station high flow and low flow offsets that are used to create the station high flow and low flow alert thresholds. And now that you've seen all the new WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5 flow programming features, in the interest of clarity, we want to point out that there are a few flow features that still can't be programmed from WeatherTrack Mobile such as the station exclusion feature that you find on the program page where you can exclude individual stations from high flow, low flow, or no flow monitoring, and anything that doesn't happen on the program page, such as the station learn flow test that happens on the learn flow page on weathertrack.net, or any of the advanced flow programming that happens with OptiFlow is not available with WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5. So there's still some programming that needs to be done at WeatherTrack Central, but what we've done here represents a giant step forward in our ability to go out into the field and quickly diagnose issues and make efficient changes to the programming. 
And finally, in addition to all of the flow, it may be even bigger news to say that you can manage all of the irrigation days and times for each individual program on your weather track. So for each program on this Pro 3, I can go in and manage the program name. And I promised earlier I would show you how to assign a program to a mainline. That's what we're doing here with program. We go in and we name the program and then we assign it to a mainline and make sure that every program is assigned to a mainline. You can include or exclude the pump start by program. And then we set up the water windows where we program in the start time for every individual program. And then the water window, which is the number of hours we can allow irrigation. So irrigation will start at 10 p.m., have eight hours, and be done by 6 a.m. for this program. And we have the second water window. If you choose to have watering in the morning and at night, for example, and then we also manage the water day mode, where you can manage the available days for irrigation. And with ever-changing restrictions, it's important to be able to come in and say, I only want to allow irrigation on certain days of the week. As you can see, WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5 has some great updates in terms of access to programming in the field. In addition to all of the controller level programming, we've also improved the access to your station level programming. So once we finished everything we need on the program tab, we'll go back to our controllers page and from our controllers page we'll advance to the stations page. And you'll recognize the stations page is where we perform manual irrigation, but the big button on the left with the name of the station on it is the shortcut to the settings page. So if we click on that settings page for a station, we see all of the station programming that you can do here on WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5. So just like the previous version of WeatherTrack Mobile, you can come in here and edit your station name if that needs to be edited. You can change the program that this station is assigned to. You can change the station mode to change how this station will generate runtime. Obviously, we are encouraging you to use the auto mode or automated by weather track for that famous weather track weather based irrigation programming. You can elect whether this station will use the predetermined water window or not. You can edit the usable rainfall and determine whether this station will listen to your rain information or not. But that was all available on the previous edition. Now, as we scroll down, we start to see some things that are new and different with WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5. Specifically, we see the ability to not only view but manage station flow settings. So if you're out in the field troubleshooting a flow issue and you want to put in a user-defined flow rate or assigned station flow value, you can change that from the app or you can change the station high flow threshold if you so choose. And you can see but not edit the station low flow threshold. I think this next addition is one of the most exciting things about the update. I'm really excited that we've added access to the station's current depletion on the app. Here you can see that displayed would be the station's current depletion, but if you click on that, you can edit that station depletion in 10% increments from 0 all the way to 50. So if you're out on site and you run a station manually until it's completely full or at field capacity, you could update that depletion to 0% and tell the controller that this station doesn't need to irrigate tonight. It's got all the water it needs. Or, if you're walking the site and a station looks dry, you can update the station depletion to 50% and say make sure that this station gets a full irrigation cycle tonight. So I think real-time management of this current depletion is a hugely important feature. Another great way we use this access to current depletion is if you have stations that are in station high depletion or have a current depletion over 70%, you can just pull that station up and reset the depletion and get rid of the station high depletion alert on that station. Always remember to hit apply to save the changes that you make. Real-time access to station depletion is something that my advanced water managers have been asking for for a long time, and now you have the power to change that depletion from WeatherTrack Mobile. I'm also excited that we've added all of the advanced station programming to auto mode. So with our previous release, you had access to the percent adjust and the sprinkler type because those are both basic settings. but what you didn't see was the advanced settings that tie to sprinkler type, like precip rate and efficiency. 
And for our advanced users, customizing the precip rate and efficiency numbers are a big part of the programming process. So giving app-based access to these features allows you to make these advanced programming changes in the field. And the previous release had access to soil type and plant type, but you could only see the root depth. You couldn't adjust it, which is a key adjustment to manage your station irrigation frequency. And while the previous release allowed you to manage the settings for microclimate and slope and location on slope, we've added access to the target MAD setting for this station. This refers to the level of depletion we'll allow for a station. So if you want to change your target maximum allowable depletion or your target MAD and you adjust it from 50% to 45%, you're saying we only want the glass of water underneath our station to get 45% deplete before we prompt irrigation and fill that glass of water back up. So the target MAD setting is another way to manage your irrigation frequency. As you can tell by the enhancements made with the WeatherTrack Mobile 3.5 update, we're working hard to make WeatherTrack the most efficient tool for water managers by bringing the programming needs from the controller level and the station level right to your smart device so they can be programmed in the field rather than being written down and taken back to be programmed at another time. Features like these will make your field management that much more efficient. Not to mention the convenience of being able to manage the programming, including your controller setup and your flow setup and your days and times or water restriction information, as well as access to all of your station programming, including that current depletion, that can give you real-time visibility and access to your controllers to see how they're being managed and make any necessary changes.